Hey YouTube, we are back again this week for another video portion of the Daily Dose Sports Podcast. Hope everyone out there had a safe and happy Thanksgiving last week. And now, well, now we're all back to the grind. That's just how life goes. Hey, this week on The Dose, we are discussing some of the NFL coaches whose seats could be warming up a bit. We are talking some NFL hot seats, so let's jump into that right now. So we are hitting the stretch run of the NFL season. I mean, week 12 is now complete. And while that might be good news for you know teams that actually have their sights set on the postseason, it is not great news for coaches whose teams are playing terrible football. But not all hot seats are created equal. There are a number of factors to consider when we look at some of these teams. I mean, mostly, what were the expectations of the team? And how much equity does the coach have? See, these things aren't all equal. You have to think about if a coach has won some things, well, he's got a little more room to struggle. And you also have to consider the franchise that is involved. Do they even care if they win or lose? It sounds crazy, but a lot of teams don't. Now, keep this in mind. In the NFL, three head coaches have already been fired at least so far, and that could change at any second. The Houston Texans, of course, fired Bill O'Brien after they started 0-4. He had made some terrible personnel moves, and his team wasn't performing, so he was gone. The Atlanta Falcons fired longtime head coach Dan Quinn after they started 0-5. You'll remember they gave up some huge leads. But remember, Quinn had taken the Falcons to the Super Bowl just back in 2016, so he got a little bit of leeway. Then, on Saturday, the Detroit Lions fired their head coach, Matt Patricia, who was 13-29-1 since taking over as the Lions head coach back in 2018. I guess you could say Matt Patricia kind of ate himself out of house and home. So, what other teams have coaches that could currently be in danger? Well, not surprisingly, there are a number of them. Because... There are so many bad teams in the NFL. So right now, let's take a look at some NFL coaches who have the hottest seats going. And I will start off with a coach that has some equity with his team for sure. I mean, he did just win a Super Bowl three years ago. But since that win, the Philadelphia Eagles have basically been a 500 team. Could that cost head coach Doug Peterson his job? Well, the record doesn't look that bad. I mean, let's be honest. The Detroit Lions would kill to get anywhere near a 500 record. And Peterson has had terrible luck with injuries. He's had a number of people banged up. But here's where it gets a little tougher for Peterson. The Eagles play in the NFC East, which is like the NFL's version of the Pac-12. I mean, the New York Giants are currently in first place of that awful division with a 4-7 and seven record. I don't think Peterson loses his job, but he may want to make a run over this last month of the season, or, I mean, he could be sleeping with one eye open. I will not say Peterson's seat is hot. I will say it is, well, lukewarm. Much like the Eagles' playoff chances. So that's a pretty good fit. The Cincinnati Bengals took a big chance on first-time head coach Zach Taylor last year when they hired him well, basically because he had been the Los Angeles Rams quarterbacks coach. And the Bengals hoped they had found their next Sean McVay. We're now getting close to two seasons into Taylor's tenure. And the team so far has a 4-21-1 record. There have already been multiple issues with players calling out the coaching staff and taking like extreme measures to try to get out of Cincinnati. Now, Young star quarterback Joe Burrow, of course, he's out for the season with that big knee injury. But with Burrow under center, the Bengals were actually showing a little promise, which is amazing because the Bengals don't have a whole lot around him, especially when you look at that Cincinnati offensive line. They're horrible. We're lucky Joe Burrow is still alive. So I actually think Zach Taylor has bought himself a little more time in Cincinnati. I don't think they'll make a move just yet. Taylor's seat is also probably lukewarm, but I'll say this. He should be taking flowers to Joe Burrow 
every single day because without Joe Burrow, I think Zach Taylor would be in serious trouble. He gave the Bengals some reason for hope, though. Now, my hometown Denver Broncos are definitely one of the worst teams in the NFL. And head coach Vic Fangio, he could be feeling some warmth on his backside as a result. Here's the thing. It isn't just the play of the Broncos. As bad as that is, I might add, it is also just the lack of organization and just general feeling of chaos within this team. Fangio has been horrible at managing the clock. The play calling has been very, very questionable. And this past week, the Denver Broncos failed to follow COVID protocols, meaning that they had to enter their game on Sunday against the New Orleans Saints literally without a quarterback on their roster. They were forced to play a wide receiver from their practice squad at quarterback since he had played a little bit of quarterback one time in college. No, I'm not kidding. I'm serious. Denver got blown out by the Saints 31-3. to They threw more interceptions, two, than they had completions, one, while the Denver Broncos passed for 13 yards. To be fair, the Broncos haven't had a quarterback on their roster since Peyton Manning left. So honestly... How is this last weekend against the Saints really all that different? But here is where Vic Fangio may catch a break. One, I know the dude is like 90 years old, but he's a new head coach. He's going to make mistakes. You kind of have to let him learn some things on the job and grow as a result. So I'll forgive some of his mistakes. Second, the Broncos have had an inordinate amount of injuries. They have like 22 players on injured reserve. So that may save him too. I will say this, Fangio's seat is warm and the heat might be rising quickly. So he needs to give Denver fans at least some hope for the next season. I think it's just warm for now though, but I also think it's getting warmer quickly. It's going up fast, much like GM John Elway's blood alcohol level. Next up, we have the Minnesota Vikings who seem to be watching their window for like a championship just close a little more every single day. Minnesota started the season one and five, and everyone was starting to plan when they would be firing head coach Mike Zimmer. But then they beat every team in their division and put together a three-game winning streak. And somehow they kind of got back into the playoff race. So, okay, call off the dogs. Everything's fine. Well, not so fast. Because then the Vikings lost to Dallas last week before they had to scrape out an ugly win on Sunday against Carolina at home. So again, I think Mike Zimmer's job is safe, maybe, at least for now. But the Vikings, like they need to have some reasons to feel good over the next month of the season. Zimmer's job probably comes down to his ability to maybe find a way to manufacture a way to get in the playoffs. Here's the thing that's kind of weird about Minnesota. We knew their offense would probably struggle, but hey, the defense can at least be decent. Well, his defense has slowly gotten worse every single year since 2017. And then, of course, on offense, Kirk Cousins. So there's that. Zimmer's seat is warming up a little bit, kind of like opposing quarterbacks do when they play against that Minnesota defense. That's not a good sign. Mike Zimmer needs to finish the season strong. Our next NFL coach on the hot seat is a guy that probably doesn't really deserve to be here. I mean, he just got the job. But remember when I talked about how expectations can change things for you? Well, our next guy could be the victim of insane expectations. I mean, let's see. What team in the NFL could be completely unrealistic every single year about what they think their team can or should do. Of course, I'm talking about the three and eight Dallas Cowboys and their new head coach, Mike McCarthy. And yes, I realize the Cowboys lost their starting quarterback, Dak Prescott. I get it. But they also need to acknowledge they were one and three with Prescott, including a blowout loss to Cleveland when their defense gave up 50 points. I don't think the Cowboys will go one and done with Mike McCarthy. 
I don't think. But there's not a whole lot to feel good about in a place they call Big D. I know this. I know that somewhere, Jason Garrett is giggling every single time he sees the Cowboys fail. And he's going, oh, you thought it was just me? I've got news for you. That place has a lot of problems. And most of them start in the owner's box, not the head coach. Okay, YouTube, be sure that you go out and check out the rest of the podcast. This week on the show, we still have a few more NFL coaches that are on the hot seat. And, you know, we haven't even gotten to the scalding hot ones yet. We've got two, three guys. I don't even know how they can sit down. Their seats are on fire right now. Plus, we have some sports news to talk. College football has some serious problems that could be coming. And we have a Daily Dose Top 5 today that counts down. Five surprising times that NFL coaches were fired. No one really expected it. I'll leave a link for the rest of the podcast here on YouTube for you. Make sure you go check out the rest of the show. Hey, hope y'all are doing well. I will see y'all next Wednesday. Have a great week.